This is Tony's Chocolonely. Tony's costs more than your average Hershey's bar, but how does it stack up? Tony's tastes a lot more like um, quote unquote real chocolate. I could eat more of this than, you know, Hershey's. So if we look at dollar sales, consumers love chocolate. We spent $19 billion, which was up about 6% in 2023 over 2022. I would pay a double price for Tony's, for sure. It's also more ethical, right? The company started by accident. The impact came first. With its bold and colorful packaging, this Dutch brand is trying to achieve a huge mission to make chocolate 100% slave-free. Today, 60% of the world's cocoa production comes from Ghana and Ivory Coast, where over one and a half million children work on cocoa farms. As Tony's, we're not interested in about just doing it the right way for ourselves. We're interested in changing the whole industry. Tony's Chocolate Only brought in $162 million in revenue in fiscal year 2023. So how did a relatively new company from Europe make a place for itself in America's crowded candy aisles? The great thing about being the CEO of a chocolate company is you get to justify eating chocolate every day. So you have to be careful. I'm Douglas Lamont and I'm the Chief Chocolate Only at Tony's Chocolate Only. So even though we're a Dutch brand by origin, our founding story actually starts in the US. In 2001, two US politicians introduced the Harkin Engel Protocol an international agreement that was signed by eight of the biggest chocolate brands, including Hershey, Nestle, and Mars. The goal, to end child labor and slavery in the chocolate industry. Two years later, a team of Dutch journalists, including Tone van de Koken, decided to investigate the progress the chocolate industry had made. There were still huge numbers of children working illegally on cocoa farms in West Africa. They felt very strongly that this needed to change and needed to be addressed. How did they go about it? Well, as well as reporting the facts, they decided that they were going to get themselves arrested. And Tone walked into a police station in the Netherlands, having just eaten a chocolate bar from one of the big chocolate companies, and insisted that he was arrested because he was aware that there was illegal child labour in this chocolate bar. And under EU law, if you're aware of something and you still allow it to happen and you participate in that, you're breaking the law and go to prison for four years. Obviously, the policeman looked at him rather strangely and didn't know what to do with this. Tone also decided to persuade the world's largest chocolate makers to change their behavior. Willy Wonka, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory film was launching in 2005. They tried to persuade Nestle, who had the rights to that bar, to introduce a child labor-free bar. They couldn't do that and decided that they needed to launch a bar for themselves. And that is how Tony's Chuckle Only was born. So Tony, because Tone, uh, the journalist, the international name is obviously Tony, and Chocolate Only, because they felt that they were on a very lonely journey to change the industry. But what we've also done to raise awareness of the inequality in the supply chain uh, is to make sure that our bar does not look like a normal bar. And what that symbolizes is the inequality in the supply chain, that you know some people have a big chunk, other people get a very small chunk. In fact, some of the uneven shapes are actually the West African countries where Tony's sources its cocoa beans. As a Dutch brand, it initially became very famous and, and grew very quickly to become one of the leading chocolate uh, bar brands in the Netherlands. From about 2014, 15 onwards, they started to expand internationally. Tony's Chuckle Only was launched in the US in 2015. Today, Tony's bars are sold nationwide at major retailers like Whole Foods, Target, and Walmart. The U.S. is clearly a, a really important market for us, not, not just because of the scale, but we, you know, we really see that consumers increasingly are becoming more conscious of the types of products they, they buy, the brands from whom they buy, the reasons behind those brands. You know, and what we believe at Tony's, we, we offer and deliver, and that seems to be resonating and working. Our most popular flavor is our sea salt caramel bar. It's universally popular, uh, closely followed by our milk bar. Tony's Chuckle Only is making a name for itself in a very crowded field. The top five manufacturers control almost 90% of sales. So if we look at all the other small players that are out there, what we see is that 150 manufacturers actually account 
or have sales greater than a million dollars in the U.S. Tony's revenue grew 23% in fiscal year 2023 to $162 million. It also received around $22 million in funding. While the company has been growing at a steady pace, it's not making a profit yet. We're not profitable, we're at a break-even position broadly as a company. We're making that choice to invest in growth. In the US market, we've just launched manufacturing uh, capability and capacity in Chicago. That takes upfront investment. What we know is essential is that we demonstrate that we can be a scaled, profitable business. Proving that we're not just a chocolate distribution charity, but a profitable, successful business is part of our impact. Besides its main chocolate business, Tony's Chuckle Only also has a second business called Open Chain. So any brand or any private label retailer can source cocoa from Tony's Open Chain and put it into their supply chain. In an ideal world, that will be much bigger than Tony's Chuckle Only. We have huge ambitions to get to 5% of the cocoa beans sourced through West Africa, and that's only possible if other partners come on board with us and in the end grow much faster than just the beans that come from Tony's Chocolate Only. Tony's recently partnered with fellow socially conscious brand Ben & Jerry's. They've made a commitment to source all of their cocoa beans for their ice cream pieces through Tony's Open Chain. And so for a big brand like Ben & Jerry's with a high commitment to ethical sourcing, to come on board with Tony's Open Chain to look at what we did, to compare it to what they were, you know, the good work they were already doing on the ground and decide that our approach was the right way forward was a big credit to the work that our teams have done on the ground. We have 100% traceability of our beans. We know every farmer that provides beans to us. And so obviously we source and collect those beans in West Africa. We convert a number of those beans into cocoa butter in West Africa. We then transport some beans and that cocoa butter to either to, to Europe or to the US, where that's turned into liquid chocolate, combined with all the interesting great flavors that we have into bars. Tony's Chuckle Only is trying to stop child labor by addressing the root issue, paying its farmers a living wage. What happens is those farmers are not able to, to have labor to support them, and in the end, their children end up working illegally on cocoa farms. In 2021, Tony's was removed from the slave-free chocolate list because of its relationship with manufacturer Barry Calibo, which it used to process beans into liquid chocolate. The company said in its defense that its cocoa beans are fully segregated in Barry Calibo's process, and that the partnership with the manufacturer allows it to scale up its production on a global level. In a statement to CNBC Make It, Tony's Chuckle Only said it will continue to source cocoa beans from West Africa as it works to solve the problems there. So what we believe in is radical transparency. So we report on every single ch case of child labor that we find in order to address it. And it's only by being transparent about the problem and then actively addressing it that you deal with the systemic issues. In fiscal year 2023, the company reported that it had found around 1,000 incidents of child labor in its supply chain. Chocolate consumption in the U.S. actually dipped 6% in 2023, but Americans were still spending more than ever on it. Well, part of the reason why we're seeing a decline in consumption is that most of us, even though we love chocolate, are still being faced with higher prices. In 2023, chocolate prices actually increased 12%, um, which is a significant increase. So faced with those higher prices, consumers once again are deciding, do I need this or do I want this? Besides the chocolate bars, Tony's Chocolate Only has been introducing new products to the market, like bite-sized chocolates and seasonal products. We've obviously got lots of seasonal products, including you know, our advent calendars. Behind one of the doors, we don't have a chocolate. Another great way to tell the story about the inequality in the supply chain. So when you don't get a chocolate in your advent calendar, you, you want to understand why. So where are the original founders today? They're still shareholders and they still regularly pop in uh, and, and see us and see the progress that we're making as a brand. We're really excited about where the brand is going and where Tony's Open Chain is going because we really feel that industry change is now possible. We're proving that we can do this at scale and also with legislation being tightened up around deforestation and traceability, we feel like all the right things are coming into place to drive wider industry change. We're not going to rest until we deliver on our mission to end exploitation in the cocoa industry. <laughs>